Hey guys, it's SD here from Discus Fish UK, just giving you a quick update on my sump. Uh, I'm not sure if you saw my last video I did uh, last month or so. Basically, I've uh, rearranged my, my sump filter, as I mentioned last time. Uh, so what I've done now, it's up and running, it's been going for about a month now. Uh, I've got the alpha grog coming into the first chamber, so again, it's quite a small amount, maybe five litres worth of alpha grog. Uh, which is coming in from the first chamber on the right hand side, I'm not sure how well you can see that. Um, then it's actually coming through, having to go through my filter, uh, different levels of, of sponge uh, and different coarseness to obviously uh, so that any particles and may, mainly harbour the good bacteria which is obviously what you want to get in your, in your actual main sump filter. Um, and then obviously that then comes over the top. Uh, and you can see that my main chamber, which uh, last time was just full of alpha grog, is now full of um, about, I think it's 10 litres of K1 filter media. Um, now obviously I think, as you can see, if I zoom further back out, you can see uh, it's only filled that chamber up maybe, what, 15, 20% if that. Um, but again, it does take a while for it to mature. It's been going for uh, just over a month now. It hasn't got any coloration to it, which it can do. Um, when obviously, I think it takes about up to six months, to, obviously depending on each fish tank, it's going to be differently. Um, but it can take up to six months to fully mature and harbour the bacteria because it's um, obviously it's having to uh, do it on a, on a moving bed. I've just turned off the air stone at the moment, just so you can see it um, as it is. And also it's a bit quiet, so with the air stone turned off, but I'll turn it on for you in just a second so you can see how it's running. Um, and again, I've just kind of left it. Um, I had to put in here this um, just another sponge because otherwise all the K1 was falling into the, the return chamber. Um, so that's all, all that is. But other than that, it's running well. I uh, just got back from um, Maidenhead Aquatics, it's called a water chest, and um, nitrogen and ammonia and, uh, and uh, sorry, nitrate, nitrite and ammonia was all healthy levels and all, uh, either zero or as, as low as um, it's safe to do so. I do water changes uh, once a week, but I'm going to up that to twice a week. I'm doing between uh, 20%, 15 to 20% uh, each time I, I do a water change. Um, running a, a 400 litre complete circuit. So when I do the water changes, I don't have to do warm up the water or anything. It's quite, it's quite simple. I get it done within half an hour, depending on on, uh, on how dirty the tank is. But the main thing is. Um, the K1 he sorts itself out so let me just put the water stone back on um, and just for you guys who may be coming new are new to discus or are thinking about um, this is more more kind of a video on, on how I kind of cycled it and how I got it up and running um, so I only got a few kind of fish in at the beginning I got this uh, pure pond in I'm not sure if you can see so pure pond uh, again it's mainly for actual ponds as it says on the label but um, because it, there's loads of beneficial bacteria in there it was really helpful um, to help kickstart the whole cycle and put in the beneficial bacteria into the media also prime again it's a really good product to use uh, I used to use um, I think it's API stress coat but I believe that that Prime is actually um, also ben more beneficial as it helps remove, remove the uh, not only the chlorine and chloramines, but also ammonia, um, which I don't think uh, stress coat does. It is pretty expensive; it's about 20 quid um, for what is this, 500 milliliters. So it's pretty expensive at 40 quid for uh, for a liter of this stuff. But it's very, very strong, uh, very concentrated, and literally one or two drops does my um, my weekly water changes. Uh, I've also had to install this uh, this kind of kind of, bit of makeshift DIY um, this valve because the pump is so is so strong it's more powerful um, than the actual return coming down the return pipe. So what that meant was more p water was getting pumped out of of the sump than it was it get returned in. So I had to actually adjust this valve and to try and find that sweet spot. Uh, so whether you've got a, a similar setup like this, um, maybe you've experienced it, or maybe you've got a different setup. Everyone's got their own kind of way of uh, of wanting it. And also because it can get a bit noisy with the air stones, that's why I've got the, the egg crates here. Um, just I've got egg crates kind of in all the main corners um, that I have 
just where the holes are, just to try and make it as quiet as possible. It, again, it doesn't do that much, but again, I've got behind there, I've then got more filter foam, just to kind of, again, make it quieter and also to insulate it more. So, as I mentioned last time, you really want to try and do as much as you can to, to ensure that the, uh, your tank and your sump and everything really is insulated as well as possible so you're not going to have any fluctuations uh, in, in your temperature which again is quite important when keeping discus or, or any real tropical fish uh, as well so back to my main um, the air stone section as you can see I've got uh, a five inch uh, ring here and also then sorry, a four inch ring and a, and a, and a five inch uh, air stone again I'm still running my two of my um, 300 watt dual heaters they've been fine it does take a little bit of fine tuning to try and adjust the temperature because again you have to do both of them and you can't just set it digitally it's, it's just on an analog switch so you have to uh, adjust them so it can take a, a bit of fine tuning literally got to move it like a millimeter if that on both of them uh, and maybe the temperature will go up by like half a degree and such so you're just trying to find that balance but I'm sure once you get there it's fine and you won't have to do much maintenance um, but I'm getting discus tomorrow so I'm quite keen to make sure that my water parameters are spot on or as close uh, as they can be um, I've been speaking a lot to the seller to try and make sure that his temperature and my water conditions are like for like or as close as they can be because again that's all going to help when the fish uh, arrive tomorrow so I'll do another video when you when they arrive and you can see how well uh, they're getting on okay so if I just put the air stone on you'll see uh, you'll just see it um, well doing its thing really Uh, oh yeah, that, that's another thing that uh, I forgot to mention, that when I got my first air stone, I got quite a cheap one from my local pet shop, which d didn't have enough air going to, into the water, so none of this kind of bu bubbleness, none of this kind of fuzz you see, uh, or, the, or the movement, sorry, none of that was really happening, so I had to, um, you know, take that, that back and get a more powerful one, so I'm actually running on the, the Tetra, I think it's the 400 or whatever their top of the range air pump is, just so I can get maximum um, a maximum amount of water into into the sump chamber to try and really get the uh, the K1 moving uh, as much as possible because again that's, that's quite important. Um, sometimes you get points where it, it just sticks like here, but likewise you can just move your air stone slightly and the, and the whole thing will change. Um, but other than that, you know, there's not really much to update on it. When I do my my weekly water changes, I simply take out this um, this blue foam here. You can see which kind of has a bit of gunk that comes from the downpipe clean that out in the um, rinse that out in, in the waste water so again you're not going to get rid of any bacteria um, and away you go really I mean it's not I haven't touched any of this, this um, foam here and I don't intend to do so um, I'm not sure if you can see it, that these black these tiny little black dots that's the um, the pure pond that's the pure pond stuff so again it's been in there for a month it's taken a long time I mean they did say it's slow releasing um, so, so releasing beneficial bacteria, but I didn't think it would take a month to, to do that. But anyway, um, that pretty much wraps it up. As you can see, I'm not sure how well you can see. This is um, unfortunately on my phone as my main camera isn't working too well at the moment. But um, yeah, if you have any questions about about your setup, whether you've got discus fish or you're looking to get discus fish, uh, either your sump setup or just general fish questions, um, do let me know. I've had a few uh, comments already, and I'll go through it and reply to as many um, comments as you do have, uh, and let me know. You know how how well you know is your setup? How you know have you changed it? So again, I'm looking to change mine uh, in the coming months, depending on, on how well. Uh, this takes off, particularly with the discus coming. I, I, you know, again, I might change this, start, scrap the whole thing, and, and start again, or, or have a, a different system or a different setup. So, again, if you've got any questions, um, any comments or experience from what you've done and what you found works or hasn't worked, let us know, and I'll share that and I'll treat that, and I'll catch you next time. Okay, have a good time, and I will see you guys later. Bye.